Okay, back again. So what I've got here is my fresh print on some tear-proof paper. Um, I basically uh, get these made on on uh, the Officeworks site here in Australia. I think in the UK, you, you guys have um, staples over there. Um, I'm not sure what the UK has got. Um, you'd, you'd have something similar over there, but um, they just let me have access to things like this tear-proof paper, which actually proves like it's hard to tear, obviously, but um, the scroll saw goes through it and it doesn't tend to fray apart. So it's actually quite ideal for jigsaw puzzles and things like that. Um, and this design I've actually made, um, the, the little fella that this is intended for, they've actually got pet Jack Russells, hence why I've got some Jack Russells there on as the main character. And they also have horses um, and live in a rural, rural setting. So I've just sort of, you know, put into uh, ChatGPT is what I use to generate the image and they've got Dali connected to it. Um, pretty much unless you're living under a rock, everyone knows about AI these days and its capabilities. So once you perfect your prompt in ChatGPT, you can pretty much say generate image and something like this comes out or you can just keep pressing the refresh circle. Um, I think with my paid subscription, I get about um, is it, I think it's 20 goes or 40 goes per hour before I've got to take a time out apparently um, and, and start again but that seems to be more than enough I never really run out unless I'm writing a, a blog article or something like that um, so yeah this is the sort of thing you can generate on AI which you can now turn into a puzzle um, or which I will turn into a puzzle and this is all the gear that I'm using just to cut out that design. So I've got my little cutting mat here. Ideally, this should be a little bit bigger, but it almost covers the, as you can see there, almost covers the whole length of the image. So I might need to stop at one point and adjust the image. Um, I've just got a little piece of um, right angled um, aluminium here, and I use that pretty much for my cutting blade to, um, to guide it. So I lay the cutting blade along the side and it just gives me a flush edge with which to run my blade along and enough of the blade that will cut the edge of the um, picture, the image I've made here. What I'll do, I'll put that little mat underneath actually. I only, I don't need the white sections of this image so I'll, I'll try and cut those out. So now I get my aluminium strip. Once I've got my cutting vinyl underneath um, and just when you see that image disappear, which is about there, I can keep my fingers safely behind the um, where the blade's running. And in theory, I can keep my cutting blade along the aluminium edge. Oops, that's not working too well. And use that as a guide and just run the Stanley blade down along the vinyl that seems to be working you can wander off with these sorts of things as well but the whole idea of the aluminium piece is that um, you can't wander into the image so you can wander away which is annoying but you're not going to cut your image I can just do a rough cut that way okay well, there we go so it's all fallen away and that's our, that's our piece of off-cut there, and that's our image along the bottom. I've left a little bit of white there, but that doesn't matter too much. Um, I mean, if you're making this to sell, you'd, you'd probably get a little bit more critical on yourself, but I'm just giving this away, so I'm not really too fussed about a little bit of white running along the edge there. In fact, when I cut out the pieces and probably give that a little bit of a sand, you'll probably find that that white will disappear anyway. So now I've just got to do that on the rest of the, um, on the other three sides of the image. All right guys, so it's about a week later. Um, 
just picking up from where we left off. So this is the background image. We've got it on our piece of ply, uh, background piece or backboard piece. Um, I've done the borders and I've got the uh, side images printed off that I'll paste onto these pieces, uh, the side and the, the two top and or the one top and one bottom piece. Um, so I'll work on putting the side ones on first, um, but as a part of that process, I'll, um, I'll actually cover up the image using some of this uh, just blank A4 sheets. So I'll cover that, um, stick that down with some of the um, blue masking tape. It's easy to peel off just to protect that um, image from the spray adhesive and I'll apply that um, to the side here underneath and to the bottom of these pieces and adhere them together and then probably get a couple of screws, I'm not sure exactly where, just to, um, I'll, I'll drill countersink and then put the screws in um, just to hold those down as additional, um, adi an additional way to hold that all together and probably do the same for the top and the bottom. So I'll get onto that now. So I finished on the um, belt sander there and it seems to have come up all right. Um, so rounded those corners as well and uh, flattened off those sides um, all the way around. So I um, wasn't too sure how that one would go but it uh, seems to have given a pretty good um, pretty good finish um, maybe a, a light sand with some uh, with the sanding block just to round over those edges just so they're not sharp just to keep little toddler fingers safe um, and I might have to address uh, that little glue point there just pack a little bit more oh, sorry get my thumb out of the way a little bit more glue in there just to bring that flush with the edge but um, yeah, happy with that overall, um, if it comes into focus for me. So um, there you go, the belt sander. Did the job, the Ryobi belt sander. Cheapy, found that one on Facebook. I think a hundred bucks, um, but did the job.
Okay, so I grabbed the paint box and uh, covered the design with a bit of um, uh, A3, cut down A3 piece of blank paper and some tape and um, just covered the design and I've gone ahead and applied some paint in various shades from light to dark starting at the top corner here. Um, seems to be touch dry now so that's good um, I've put down a bit of tape as well as you can see here I'll peel that back that'll leave the bare uh, wood underneath and that'll give me a spot to add adhesive to um, and then I can put the uh, border design pieces in so this is the bottom I hope it's the bottom um, where I've put this uh, strip in and obviously one side here and one side there and the top up here um, wasn't too sure what to put along there but since I was in the middle of painting I, I figured I might as well just paint it and I can add something over the top of it anyway but there we go there's our um, project post painting um, so I'll um, take the um, take the cover off and um, keep going with it masking tape pieces so that's obviously one side the bottom and the other side um, so that masking tape's done well to um, define the uh, area that I'll put those uh, border pieces on okay so I've gone ahead and um, glued down those border images as well as I could um, a little bit of um, where I didn't quite get up to the edge there, I can just grab a small paintbrush a bit later on and, and bring that paint right into the edge of those images. That's not really too big a deal. Um, the important thing is that they're stuck down, um, but it's, uh, it's the base that will hold the jigsaw puzzles. I'm just sort of racing through and thinking up improvements as I'm going. And that shading of paint, you can see I've gone from sort of dark to, to light there just doing diagonal uh, swipes of the spray can um, to get that shading effect through a little bit of blue there so we'll see what the final result looks like soon come to the finale which is um, having reapplied the paint spray paint around the sides we've adhered the, um, the images along the, the side and the bottom there and of course we've got our backing in I've made a little uh, indentation there just to help um, you know you can get a, a finger in just to lift the puzzle pieces when they um, when they get put in but here are our puzzle pieces um, of course our Jack Russell main characters there and a couple of the others um, and of course it's a two function it gives two functionalities this one so it's got the puzzle on the front that they can do but it's also a chalkboard on the back um, i ended up putting a couple of screws in each corner just to hold the um the two pieces of um the backing board and the border pieces together i think on the other side it might be just lifting away a little bit oh no but um yeah so i've just got the two um a screw in each two screws in each corner and um and that seems to be securing the um the base and the border pieces together quite well so there we go our um our finished product toddler jigsaw puzzle ready to go but that's our finished design. Sorry about the mess, but uh, quite a confined little work area I've got here that um, still does the trick. Alrighty, well thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next uh, project I do.